Beloved, beloved is on time. Say, I'm on time. Always on time. <laughs> okay, so I thought I'll take a small word today. And it's good, it's small, because we started half an hour late. <laughs> okay, so God knows even beforehand all the glitches that even might happen the next day. Okay, uh, how many remember what we took last week? What did we take last week? We are going to have tests. <laughs> Beloved is a school, I told you. There will be marks given, you'll fill it out, everything. Okay, what did we speak on last week? Change, change. So what did I say? You know when people say, God loves me just the way I am. Yeah, he loved you just the way you were. But the minute you encountered him, he's not there to keep you just the way you were. <laughs> He's there to change you inside out. That's what a real father does. And why is he there to change you inside out? Because all the identities you have came from the world. It didn't come from him. It came from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then it came from the devil, who is the ruler of this world, the Bible says. But now we've been pulled out. We've come in Christ. Now he's under our feet. Okay, and the father is there to, to change, to wash all of your soul with his life. Okay, so let's, um, so I wanted to, I've, I've done this, um, I've done this illustration with you before, but I want to take something. Okay, so I want to talk about purpose. So can I have some examples? Okay, I have a mug here. Uh, can I get some pens in it? Some pens for the mug? Okay, let's take these pens. Okay, uh, and I need a bottle of water, a bottle of water. Okay, so what is this? It's a, it's a mug, okay? And uh, what can I use this mug for? What is the use of this mug? What is the purpose of this mug? Starbucks coffee. Okay, so let's say this mug is on a table. I put some pens in it. Okay, is this filling its purpose? One of the purposes maybe. Okay, it's multi-purpose, right? So it's, it's there, I can put some pens in it. Uh, maybe I'll remove the pens, I'll put a plant in it. Okay, and it's still doing some function. But when I put water in it, what happens? Huh? Now I put water in it, and now I drink it. Sorry. What is happening? It's coming to its full purpose. Okay? So, so if the mug, but where will the mug get its true purpose from? Where will the mug get its true purpose from? How will the mug know it was meant for water? From the person who made the mug. So if the mug never met its creator, it is without purpose. It might be doing many things, but it has no, it will never have its purpose. It's doing many other things, okay? Similar like an umbrella. An umbrella, you open it, it's actually there to shield you from the rain. How would I know it? Because I made the umbrella. But someone can look at an umbrella, put it for decorative things, can put other things, and the umbrella, if it doesn't meet, have an encounter with the one who made it, is just going to be, doesn't even know who it is. It's just randomly doing things. And so where do you get purpose from? from the creator. It's through relationship. That's why you can have many, you know, famous people or like actors and all of that and they're pursuing various things. Some are pursuing money, some are pursuing fame. And they can do so many things and sometimes they just give up their lives. Is why? Because they thought they were called for that, 
but they know that even pursuing those things they are not fulfilling their true purpose and so without purpose and how can they know know their purpose if they've never had an encounter with the one who made them okay relationship the creator will always give its creation purpose okay so now where will sons of god find your true purpose so purpose is not something that you are doing i could be geetu is a dermatologist she's a doctor i am a designer someone else is an architect these are the things that you're doing they're not necessarily your purpose and what you're called for but what are sons of god called for what were we called for and it's when you're in the purpose that god has made you to be you will find true fulfillment also in your purpose is provision everything that the father has for you has got to do with the purpose he called you for okay so let's read in um, i want to take something <clears throat> let's read um, genesis i love genesis how many love genesis okay let's read genesis 1 can we have the board here this board okay genesis 1 beloved is alive sharper than a two edged sword okay genesis 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of god was hovering over the face of the waters then god said it doesn't say god said let there be light it says god said light be okay and there was light and god saw the light that it was good i love that everything that god made god says that it was good okay now see this and god divided the light from the darkness god called the light day and the darkness he called night so the evening and the morning were the first day then god said let there be a firmament firmament is like an uh, an expanse okay like the sky in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from and let it divide the waters from the waters Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and so it was and God called the firm firmament heaven so the evening and the morning were the second day verse 9 then God said let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear and and it was so and god called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas and god saw that it was good verse 11 then god said let the earth bring forth grass the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind whose seed is in itself on the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass the herb that yields seed according to its kind and the tree that yields the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind and god saw that it was good so the evening and the morning were the third day verse 14 then god said let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years and let them be for the lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and it was so then god made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night what is this he made the stars also the lesser light the moon god sent them god set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and god saw that it was good so the evening and the morning were the fourth day verse 20 then god said let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens so god created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves 
with which the waters abounded according to its kind and every winged bird according to its kind and God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying be fruitful and multiply what does God's definition of good look like be fruitful I have great joy that you bear fruit and that your fruit remain God is all about multiplying life okay be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea and let birds multiply on the earth so the evening and the morning were the fifth day then God said let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth each according to its kind and it was so and God made the beast of the earth according to its kind cattle according to its kind and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind and God saw that it was good verse 26 then God said then God said after he made everything God said now let us make man in our image according to our likeness think about that according to our likeness now in Christ you become partakers of his holiness means God likeness that's why it says as he is so are you in this world that means as he is like he is so will you be in his likeness okay and it says here let them have now see this what was Adam's purpose let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so God created man in his own image in the image of God he created him male and female he created them then God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply now see this fill the earth subdue it what is the meaning of subdue okay let's read this fill the earth subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air over every living thing that moves on the earth God put Adam and Eve and he told them their purpose was to subdue that word subdue means to dominate or to bring into bondage when God put Adam and Eve here, they were not the only ones. There, were other, there was other stuff going on there. Okay, the verses in Genesis prove that. Later on, God put a mark. Who did he put a mark on? Cain. Why? He said so that to keep you safe from the others. Who are the others? If Adam and Eve were the only ones here. Okay, we were put here to actually subdue all of the chaos that was going around here to bring it into subjection into bondage okay that word subdue means to bring into bondage to to dominate it means to bring to tread and bring under your feet everything under your feet in Christ is everything under your feet now all principalities powers dominion everything the everything is under your feet okay now see this uh, let's go to the next verse verse 29 and God said see I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you it shall be for food also to every beast of the earth to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life I have given every green herb for food and it was so then God saw everything that he had made and it indeed it was very good was very good okay so the evening and the morning were the sixth day then the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. 
This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being okay in hebrew it says a living soul verse 8 the lord god planted a garden eastward in heaven in eden and there he put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground the lord god made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food what does it say he made it pleasant to the sight good to see and good to eat but the tree of knowledge of good and evil good to see but not good to eat when god gives you something it'll be good to see and good to eat don't be hasty okay now see this it says here uh where was i okay yeah the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil then the lord verse 15 i've just skipped a few lines then the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Whose idea was it that you should not have the knowledge of good and evil? The father's idea. Think about it. Today we think that everyone should know right and wrong. But father's idea, God's idea was that you never have the consciousness of right and wrong. Why? Because then you'll have to live by it. Okay? Now see this. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for the day, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gives, gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Why did God give names? Why did Adam gives, give names? What happens when you give a name to somebody? You have many dogs. Say there are many dogs. And then you call someone Simba. What happens? Through name comes relationship that you can have. That's why. To just have relationship with all of creation. Okay? Now see this. But for Adam there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. In the new covenant, when you become a son of God, there's no hierarchy. There is oneness. Before the fall, Adam saw her as bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Okay? Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. I told you I looked up in the Greek this word naked. It means whole. But after the fall, when that word naked comes, it means barren. It changes. They saw lack in each other. Okay? Now see this. Chapter 3. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? 
And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Okay, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took off its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were, what happens? They were opened and they knew that they were naked. The minute Adam fell, his eyes were opened to lack. He fell in a realm of death. In Christ, your eyes are also being opened. In Ephesians, it says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the inheritance that God has for you. Okay? Now see this. Uh, <clears throat> then the eyes of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Who told you? that you have lack. Who told you? Okay? And now look what it says here. Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she, she gave me of the tree and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. What is the devil called in, the, in Revelation? The number one word for him? Deceiver. Accuser of the brethren and deceiver. You know when the devil actually quoted to Eve, he actually spoke a few things correctly. But he deceived. Basically God's decision was, this tree is not good for you. And he tricked it. He said, your eyes will be opened, which is right. Because in the other verse, it says, when God is discussing, when God is sharing, it says that now man has become like us, knowing good and evil. Does God know good and evil? Yes, he does. He chooses to be good to you. Okay? Now see this. Okay, so let's see. The serpent deceived me and I ate. So, the, so, so Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle. And more than every beast of the field, on your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his feet. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. The ruling part, dictating over your wives, this came after the fall. Before the fall, it is oneness. That's why even in Christ right now, you're one with Christ. Okay? One with each other. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, where are we? Verse 17. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. You know the, the previous, the curse that fell on the woman, woman was what? What was the curse that fell on the woman? Let me just go back to verse 16. I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. You know, Geetu has a testimony. Geetu is a doctor, dermatologist. When she got pregnant with her second baby, the doctors were not taking her in the hospital. Why? Because she was not getting labor pains. 
you know the curse was that out of labor pain you would bring forth the child in christ you're redeemed so not necessarily you need to have those pains i know in uh, africa there's a testimony of someone who gave birth in three months to a full-grown baby in christ okay we are so programmed to death after you fell into the cycle of death that now god is programming you to life so geetu because she's a doctor she checked herself in the hospital she got to do that and uh, i was the only one there we have a picture with her and the baby came out in like what two hours she goes zoop the baby's out and like i put it on the group right like she had a baby the other way it was born is because you don't have to conform yourself to the patterns and cycles of the world when you're in christ you're a new creation you're redeemed from the curse that fell on fell on uh, eve okay and what was the curse that fell on adam let's read that verse 17 then to adam he said because you have heeded the voice of your wife you listen to your wife it's not wrong to listen to your wife now you're one listen to each other but take counsel from each other okay um <clears throat> see this and have eaten from the tree which i commanded you saying you shall not eat of it now this is the curse that fell on adam cursed is the ground for your sake in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life that means everything that you do you're going to sweat and labor for it okay both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you and you shall eat the herb of the field in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it you were taken for dust you are and to dust you will return that's why if you burn somebody up what's going to happen they're going to go to ashes okay what was so what was the curse that fell on adam all your life you're going to have to toil you're going to work very hard and through hard work you'll get money but when you come to christ it's not work hard it's work smart you'll do little and you'll have more increase okay expect that for all of you okay and adam called his wife's name eve because she was the mother of all all living also for adam and his wife the lord god made tunics of skin and clothed them verse 22 then the lord god said behold the man has become like one of us to know good and evil and now least he put out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever therefore the lord god sent him out of the garden of eden to till the ground from which he had he was taken so he drove out the man and he placed a cherubim that means an angel at the east of the garden of eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life so what do we talk about we went through genesis how did the fall happen there were two trees okay newcomers new sons there are two rems the tree of knowledge of good and evil or what the hindus call karma and after adam partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil we fell into because adam partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil death came in that's why man is dying that's why in the previous times adam and his generation were living for how long 1000 years 800 years 500 years and then condemnation comes in because from the knowledge of right and wrong what happens if you do something wrong what happens you get condemned and condemnation leads to death and so how does now god get you out of this to here what is the door jesus the father sent his son to go on the cross to conquer sin and death for you that's why what is the cross of christ it's identification okay beloved is awake alive sharper than a two edged sword okay yes okay let's read john 316 What does it say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That means only one of its kind. That word begotten is monogene. Okay? In Greek. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. he who believes in him is not condemned but he who does not believe 
is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world and the men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For every one practicing evil hates the light and does not come into the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Okay, so uh, what, what, what uh, last night I was thinking, what am I going to take today? What, you know, we spoke about change last week and then God gave me this word, just talk about purpose. What is your purpose? Okay, I remember when, um, uh, you know, when I was small, I wanted to become a fashion designer. And so I remember I was just standing uh, that time uh, becoming a fashion designer. There was no fashion college. There's no, there was no Lakme India Fashion Week. Fashion designer was something that you get married and then boutique khol do. That was the idea. This was in, I'm talking about 1995 in that time. Okay. And I remember standing in the doorway. My mom was there. I said, mom, what should I become when I grow up? She's saying, you like making dresses for your dolls. So become a fashion designer. And I said, okay. Like literally, I was like maybe in third standard that time, okay? And that was like that moment. And then praise God, at the age of like when I was in 10th standard, FDCI was formed, the Fashion Design Council of India. And then I decided, okay, uh, you know, thank God, a fashion designer became not something you just get married and the housewives do something, but it had an actual uh, like a accreditation or whatever you say, a credit for becoming a proper industry. But the minute I, and I always pursued, I had this ambition to become this world-renowned fashion designer. But the day I met Christ, everything changed. And it is like this cup that I gave you this uh, example of. This cup, you can put some pens in it, and you can put a flower pot in it. But only when the cup meets its creator, does he realize what the purpose was. And you cannot realize what your purpose is until you've met the one who made you. And then when I met the one who made me, I realized my purpose. It was not fashion designer. He's not taken it away from me. He's added me. I'm celebrated in my industry, but suddenly it became secondary. It's not my purpose. I was called to be a son of God. Like each of you, you're called. And when you're in your purpose, you'll find fulfillment. So in finding your purpose, when I put water in this, the cup finds its purpose. And when the cup can go and give somebody else a drink, the person who's drinking it also finds refreshment. Are you understanding? You are understanding. Beloved is an understanding church. Okay? So, <clears throat> let's see this. 1 John 3. What is the purpose? If you're in Christ, you become a son of God. What is your purpose? For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Sandra shared a testimony about she having breast cancer. So what are sons of God? So if I get to hear or if you get to hear someone has breast cancer, what do you do? You're there to do what? Let the cancer be in that body? What are you there for? To destroy the works of the devil. Anything that is bad, anything that is of death, God is not the orchestrator of it. Accidents, bad relationships, anything. Most people attribute it to God. It's not God. That's why God sent his son. The first thing that Jesus said is that I have come to give you life and life more in abundance. And we just read in Genesis, when God made everything, when God made the sun, when God made the moon, when God made everything, he said, the next line says, and he saw that it was good. Your father is a good God. We partook from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We fell into a realm and the cycle of sin and death. The way to bring us out from one realm into another realm, what did the father do? He sent his son. Because his children got lost, started calling bad things good. And so Jesus goes on the cross. When Jesus went on the cross, who went on the cross? He was our representation. He's called the monogene, one of its kind. So when he went on the cross, you went on the cross. 
When he was buried, you were buried. When he rose again, you rose again with him. After Jesus rose again, he conquered sin and death for you. Now he said, go and tell the whole world the Messiah has come. And you can come back home to your father, have a relationship back, finding true purpose. And now you can expect in every area to have life and life more in abundance. Okay? So what is your purpose? You can be doing many professions. You can be an architect, you can be a doctor, you can be a designer. That's something that you do. Your purpose is different. Okay? It's your call to be a life-giving spirit. John 17. Now this is the prayer that Jesus did. Just before he's going to the cross, he's come to pay the price for the sins of the whole world, right? For your sins and my sins. Now see what he, uh, what he says, John 17. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And what is eternal life? And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. How many come from Hindu backgrounds? Few. 99% of our church is from Hindu background. I remember Sheetal had a testimony. Sheetal is, comes from Sindhi. Sindhi, Sheetal is putting both her hands up. Do you know Sheetal's testimony? Sheetal's aunt, for those who don't know, Sheetal's aunt came from a um, proper Sindhi uh, background. She was diagnosed at the age of 20. Her age, your aunt's age. 18. How old was she? She was about late 20s. Okay, her aunt. She had two brain tumors, diagnosed with two brain tumors. Last stage, okay. So she goes, so someone told her about, uh, she was a big one of the idols. She used to worship a lot and everything. So she went for one operation and her whole face came down. She was completely paralyzed, okay. So she wrote her will down, correct? She wrote her will down because she knew, and this is in the 1980s, there's no proper, uh, med medicine wasn't that advanced. Uh, there was no such thing for brain tumors. I don't know if there was any successful doctors then. And so she wrote her will down because she knew that she's probably not going to make it through the next operation. So last minute, uh, you know, in the last month, someone came and told her about Jesus. Someone came and gave her a Bible. And imagine all her life she's worshipped something else, thinking something else is God. And then someone comes and just plonks her a Bible and says, hey, this is the truth. And then she goes for some prayer meeting, pretty much like this. And uh, people were singing songs, the praise and worship was going on. And she felt hands on her. And she felt a weight. So she looks behind, but nobody is laying hands on her. And so she's wondering what this weight is. She goes for the next test and the brain tumor has vanished. And that's how her whole family came into the, to the Lord. You know, I put up a testimony of this guy, Santosh, on the Oneness Group. You're it. Very nice testimony. He's a Hindu guy who never heard about Jesus. Uh, uh, you know, he died. He goes to heaven, meets Jesus. He's wondering where his Hindu gods are. They weren't there. Uh, okay. And then he didn't even know that he met Christ. And he comes back. Jesus tells him, go and tell about me to the world. So he comes back and... Uh, it took some time till he realized who he met in heaven. He's saying, who is that guy? And then uh, in the journey, God sent a Christian along his way. And he started reading the Bible. And he's like, oh my God, this is the one whom I met. Had a face-to-face -face encounter with him. Very nice testimony. But I think that guy was um, a doctor. I don't know I, uh, in that testimony what it, he was. But his purpose came. He must have been in his 70s. But his purpose came after he met the one whom he met. So you could be doing so many things, but up until you meet the one who made you, only the, one, the creator can always tell his creation what his purpose is. And if you're not with him, then you'll find a void in your life. And you're doing so many things, but you don't know what it is. It's like the cup with the pens in it. It's not fulfilling because it is not what it was made for. Okay? Now, let's see this. So look at this prayer that Jesus made, okay? I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. I'm on verse 4. 
And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Verse 6, I have manifested your name to the men who you have given me out of this world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and have kept, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you, for I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and they have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Verse 9, I pray for them, I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the Son of Perdition, that he's talking about Judas. That's a scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself. Sanctify means separate, constantly separating. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. When I had symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, everyone can tell me I have it, but then I sanctified myself. No. I'm in Christ, I'm born again, born from above. This can happen to them, the people who don't know Christ, but not me. And the more I sanctified and I rested in what my father says about me, what happened? All of that resurrection life that is in you, everything disappeared, okay? And that's 10 years ago. Okay, now see this. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who, you, who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one as you father are in me and i in you that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me i have given them that they may be one just as we are one i in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in one and the world and the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me and have loved them as you have loved me. In every area, the Father wants to boast that someone can look at your life and say, she is with her Father. That you are with your Father. He wants to boast about you and show off His goodness in your life. Okay? Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me, and I have declared to them your name, and will declare it that the love with which you have loved me, the love with which you have loved me, may be in them and I in them. Do you know every time, every Sunday you come and you're hearing the word of God, your mind is getting renewed on this side of the cross? You're coming out of a death mindset into a mind of life, into God's mind, what He has for you, into goodness. The whole world, regular person you sit is just so death-oriented. You go to someone, I told you, and beloved, if you have nothing good to say to anybody, please don't say anything. Don't tell them they're looking tired. You telling them they're looking tired makes them more tired. In the presence of light, there is life. In fact, when you go stand in front of them, what's going to happen? You're going to refresh them, okay? Because they're standing in the presence of Christ, okay? Let's read this and then I'll, I'll share a little bit more. Proverbs 19.21 Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose 
that prevails. That means you could plan so many things, but then what God has planned for you, that will prevail. There is a joke someone said, how do you make, how do you make God laugh? How do you make God laugh? <laughs> Tell him your future plans. <laughs> Understood? Did I understand? Yesterday my trainer was trying to tell me a joke. He said, Aapne joke ka satyanash kar diya. He said, uh, in CID, this, that cop series, uh, the, the joke was, I don't know if it was a joke, but he said, Tanki mein paani nahi hai. So the, the police goes, Iska matlab hai, tanki khali hai. So I didn't understand. I was like, so it means no water? He's, he's like, ma'am. Aapne joke ka satyanash kiya. <laughs> Anyways, if, if you didn't get it, you're with me. I'm one with you. Okay. Romans 8, 28. Uh, and we know, now see this. I love this. And we know that all things work together for to those who love God and to those who are called according to His. Yeah. When you're in Christ, when you found your purpose, what is your purpose? We'll come to it towards the end. Beloved is awake. Everything about your father, all provision, everything that he has for you has got to do with the purpose he's called you for. And it says here, God is able to make all things, even the messes that you made in your life. You think there was a delay, you went, you didn't get your admission in time, you you know, you should have said yes to that guy 10 years ago and now you're feeling terrible that you're single. It says that God is able to make all things work together for your good. Okay? To those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Everything about you, I know that God has called me to, I wanted to go to New York. That didn't happen. And then God pushed me to India. Okay? And then 20 years ago, I told you, I didn't know Beloved will start. But then, there is no fulfillment I find more than doing the purpose that God called me for, is to reunite a lost son back to his father. And we're all about God's purpose. You'll realize all provision, including finances, including everything, came when I was all about his purpose. And you'll just find, I told you, a satisfaction, because now you're in relationship with the one who made you, with the Creator, the one who made me. So now I know what my purpose is, okay? For whom He foreknew, that is you, everyone sitting here, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He predestined, these He also called. Whom He called, these He also justified. That means in Christ, He's removed all your sins away. Whom He justified, these He also glorified. Isaiah 46.10 I make known the end from the beginning, says God. From ancient times, what is still to come, I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. From the east, I summon a bird of prey from a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that I will bring about. What I have planned, that I will do. Whatever God has purposed for your life will all be added to you. Rest, okay? 1 John 3, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 Corinthians 15, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being or a living soul. The last Adam is a life-giving spirit. As a son of God, when you're in Christ, you're called to be a life-giving spirit. That's why you can't be depressed. You know, if you're feeling low one day, go and be a life-giving spirit. That means go and water and refresh somebody else. Because, because when you're coming into what God called you to be, then it says that he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed you'll realize that you're getting refreshed back. Okay? We're called to be life-giving spirits. Why did I make this little chart? I made this for maybe new sons who are coming and who are seeing it for the first time. Okay? So when we didn't know Christ, 
we were already in this most of us were here all of us were here without christ and then someone came and told you about jesus one day they said hey no this is not a real father let me introduce you to your real father the one who made you and then through the cross he's called the door not many doors christ is called the door back home to your heavenly father he's called the shepherd looking for his lost children to come back home and then we came into back home to the father where it's a life of rest what is rest sunday six days god made the earth on the seventh day he rested from all his work it's a holiday not a holiday a holy day sanctified it that means god's children and all of creation everything it said that god rested from all his works what did jesus say i am the sabbath i am the rest so when we come to christ in christ you rest he works it's like all your life you've been driving your car and then jesus comes and says hey take the next seat now can i can i plan your life that's what he did to all of us okay i remember the day when i met jesus i told you i was so uh, you know that whole the the confusion had left all god one god so much confusion is beja fry and then the rest was like i know his name that he knew all about me but now i could get to know him and the biggest rest i had was that i'm back home with my father i don't have to plan my life because he's planning it for me it's a fathered rest you were an orphan and now you've come back home to being father you were a sinner your sins were upon you but when you received christ he forgave all of your sins and now you've become a son of god why son is because the spirit of the son comes and dwells in you that's how we can be women but god refers to you as a son of god not boy son is just a new creation a new species his life has come into you and now you can start living longer and longer and longer okay we are our father is teaching us what his truths are in all things you are remembering where you came from you are remembering who your father is in all things you are resting more okay so what is your purpose to be a life giving spirit so you can be doing many things you can be in your job you can be in a call center and those are the things that you do but you were not born for that those are the things that you're doing your purpose comes from your father and we're called as sons of god you were called to destroy the works of the devil to bring order in this world to be a life giving spirit and when you're giving a life giving spirit to others that's when you're fulfilling the purpose that god made you to be okay you can't fulfill and you can't be a life giving spirit to somebody else unless you first receive the life from your heavenly father first and that's why in john 17 he talks about father i'm praying and this is my prayer that they be rooted in the love that they know how much i love them and my love may be in them and that we grow in oneness with each other so how can you be a life giving spirit if you don't receive life first so that's why you come here you're hearing the word you're receiving that life and now you're able to be a life giving spirit to somebody else okay small message today and god is so good we started half an hour late and for the first time my message is so short <laughs> okay but god knew beforehand it is a deep message so your purpose is not the things that you're doing your purpose will only come from the one who made you okay and it's your call to be a beloved son of god you were made to be the object of his affection to receive all of his love so that you can give all of that love to somebody else to be a life giving spirit okay you're a son first bringing back home the lost sons back to their father okay so let's close in prayer we'll give a tithe you know what a tithe is right of all, everything that you heard today you're going to thank god for it and he's going to multiply that so say this after me father I thank you I'm a son in your kingdom. Jesus you're my high priest. I give you a tithe of all the increase of all the understanding that you got to me today. I just worship you with it. Just thank just thank the father for everything that you heard today. Stora hadari arara pa shi klorodoro ro pa va hasteri arara pa I'll just ask Hebron to take one song and then we'll close. Hebron, can you come ahead? Maybe just acoustic. 
the song that you took on Wednesday. What was that? God, I look to you. God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. I got vision to see things like you do. Oh God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from. I got wisdom to know just what to do. God, I look to you, you where my help comes from. I got vision to see things like you do. Oh God, I look to you, you where my help comes from. I got wisdom to know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. Oh, I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. Oh, I will love you, Lord, my strength. Oh, I will love you, Lord, my shield. Oh, I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Oh, hallelujah, our God reigns. Oh, hallelujah, our God reigns. Forever, all my days, hallelujah. Forever, all my days. Hallelujah, forever all my days, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 